and the water pump rests on these two long studs here and actually if you raise the engine up uh, just a little bit you'll be able to clear the sidewall and remove the water pump without having to remove either of these long studs and then also um, the original gasket is uh, kind of easy to miss on this but it's a metal gasket there we go all right so there's uh, the original gasket it's uh, metal so it's kind of hard to see so it looks like there wasn't a gasket or something maybe or maybe just a little silicon there but you do need to remove that and there's my nice shiny new water pump which i will torque down on this model the specification is 53 inch pounds and with my rear cover bolted all down i can now put back my camshaft sprocket there and this gets torqued down to 94 foot pounds now it's time to reinstall the idler pulleys at uh let's see well they have different specs i think this one is 25 foot pounds and this one i think is 32 foot pounds for this guy though um, which is of course this is the one where your timing belt tensioner uh, pushes up on to create the tension you may miss this but there is a washer behind this one um, so if you miss that washer it's still stuck to the timing cover and it may fall off or something at any time but make sure that you got your washer for this guy it's kind of easy to miss all right I've got all of my pulleys and everything in there so the only timing component left besides the belt is this tensioner here and you'll notice the new tensioner has a pin in it this is a hydraulic pin here that when you pull the pin out it's going to expand and push on the, the uh, tensioner pulley to create the tension now the thing is do not pull this pin until you are absolutely certain that it's time to do so if you pull the pin and you find you are not lined up properly you can go ahead and remove this and put it into a vise and and crush it back down and go ahead and put the pin in but it's a real pain in the butt to do honestly so uh, leave the pin in and then just go ahead and bolt it up loosely and then after that i'm going to go ahead and thread up my belt and match the lines on my belt here the little white paint marks as close as I can to the camshaft mark paint marks that I made earlier and once we get everything in the ballpark uh, then comes the fun part then comes making sure that everything is perfectly aligned up and in time and uh, then we'll go ahead and pull the pin on our tensioner after we tighten it up and hopefully everything ends up perfectly in time so I'll show you how to do that everybody's got their own way of doing this maybe um, there is sort of like a official correct way and that is to thread up your timing belt from the crankshaft uh, in I guess a clockwise direction or whatever over one sprocket and through the system and over the other um, I've never found that that really works any better than the way that I do what I do is I actually start from both the camshafts and line up my timing marks here and um, go ahead and secure them with these clamps so i'll put a few clamps on there and this way um, it kind of takes care of sort of the hard part for me and then i'll put some other clamps on the rear one now on this rear camshaft here if we look let me zoom in a little bit here this can be really tricky because the parallax if you look at the line which i can see that the white line on the timing belt is matched up with the white line on the sprocket but it looks like it's easily a couple of teeth off my white mark on the timing cover however if we look at it from the correct perspective instead of looking at it at an angle here we can see that it is actually indeed lined up exactly so um, it's very important that you not look at it from an angle and that you use your mirror to make sure whether you're lined up or not. But what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put some clamps on there also to lock that in position. All right, now this is the tricky part here. So um, what I've done here is, uh, I've, again, I've got the top part kind of timed up and locked down and everything. But if we look here... 
um, at my white paint marks, I have, before I finish putting the timing belt over the crankshaft, hopefully this shows up in the camera. All right, there we go. You can see that uh, at the very uh, top on the oil pump, my white paint mark, and I'm two teeth off. I've backed off the crankshaft, two teeth from that timing mark. And the idea is I'm going to go ahead and put the timing belt on with the crankshaft out of time. But then when I tighten my tensioner, which is loosely bolted in over here, when I tighten that and it takes up the slack, I should end up where I want to be. And um, depending on you know certain things, sometimes it's two teeth, sometimes it's three. Um, you want to make sure that you have your slack kind of on the left side of this picture so that it takes up the slack from the left. And remember the uh, camshaft shouldn't move because I've got it secured with the wrench. So the idea is that I can take up the slack and end up in the timed position. And this is not perfect. You may have to do three teeth or something or maybe even rotate the crankshaft um, just a little bit after you tighten the tensioner. But uh, we'll see how this looks after I get it into position. Once I get it into position and I've tightened my tensioner over here. Remember, I'm not going to pull the pin on the tensioner yet. I'm going to check my marks first, make sure I'm all lined up, and then we're going to run a couple of cycles to make sure that the engine stays in time and then we can pull the pin. So let's go ahead and let me get this belt on here. All right, now I've got the belt just about on there. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and tighten my tensioner up here all the way to take up the slack and I'm going to see where the position ends up. All right, so now my tensioner is tightened and I'm gonna just kind of help this along to take up the slack uh, by moving forwards. And there's the slack taken up. So let's see how we ended up with our timing marks. And uh, incidentally, this procedure works on any of these engines that have the hydraulic tensioner like that. A number of Chryslers have them. Um, I know the, uh, in, the engines for the Intrepids, the V6s, uh, all have this stuff. So um, pretty useful technique to do. Again, it works for me. Um, you know, I've, I've had a friend that tried to do this and it didn't work really well for him. But, um, you know, sometimes there's a little trial and error involved. But let's go ahead and see where we ended up. So we can see that we have ended up on the top dead center mark as expected. So that's excellent. I'm very happy about that. So, but remember, we are not going to pull the pin yet. We uh, want to check the top first and make sure we didn't move our position with the cams. All right, and we can see that our front cam is still in its timed position here. So one more check. All right, and you think this is tricky with a mirror. Try doing it with a mirror and a camera. Um, let's see. Ah, there we go. Check it out. It is perfectly lined up too. So all three of our timing marks are perfectly lined up right now. So here is what we got to do now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the clamps now. Remember, don't remove the timing pin yet because we have to make absolutely sure that we have taken up all of the slack. So what we're going to do is rotate the engine two full revolutions, 720 degrees, to bring our camshaft timing marks back around again. Now remember, um, the belt marks are no longer going to line up once we rotate the crankshaft because uh, the crankshaft pulleys at a different size than this. So we'd have to rotate around hundreds of times probably before these timing marks on the belt came back into play, but that's all right. We do have our timing marks on our sprockets and we're going to run two revolutions with the crankshaft and see if we remain lined up. Now remember to go really slowly on these crankshaft revolutions because we don't have full tension on the timing belt because we haven't pulled the pin on the tensioner yet. So go very slow so you don't jump a tooth or anything like that. And then we'll see how it ends up. All right, and uh, as you're rotating, if you feel any strong resistance or you hear anything contacting each other, then of course stop what you're doing, immediately recheck your timing, make sure you're not trying to drive a piston through the valve or anything like that. But right now this feels pretty good. Also make sure you're not jumping any teeth or anything. You'll sometimes feel it slip. But there we go, we've got that lined up. Again, we don't have our helpful marks anymore with the belt. But let's check all three of our timing marks after we've rotated this thing. 
All right, so those marks are lined up. All right, and I hope this is the last time I have to do this, but ah, there we go. There is our rear cam mark. So again, we don't have the little helpful mark on the belt itself, but we can clearly see that we are perfectly lined up with our cam marks. All right, timing belt change almost complete. So what we have to do now, pull the pin on the tensioner, and then we wanna make sure after we pull the pin on the tensioner that the extra tension doesn't set everything off by a tooth or so. So we'll wanna recycle again, two full revolutions of the crankshaft, bring the timing marks on the cams back around to their positions, recheck them. If everything rechecks then, then you can go ahead, put everything back together. It's easy to forget to refill the coolant, by the way. I always put the coolant bottle on the driver's seat just to make sure I don't forget before I start the car. And then you want to go ahead and make sure that you don't hear any strange noises or anything like that. One of the things to watch out for, and this is pretty good advice anyway with timing belts, even if you haven't just changed one, if you're running the engine and you start to smell a real burning rubbery smell coming from the engine that may possibly be because you have a frozen idler pulley and the belt friction is sliding over that frozen idler pulley if you ever have that happen immediately stop the engine inspect to make sure that it's not a brake problem or a drive belt issue or something like that because if it is the timing belt then you will have to go ahead and take this apart and inspect which idler pulley might be frozen maybe the belt is rubbing against the rear cover something like that but you'll want to check that and it's good advice anyway very often when i see cars that have failed timing belts it's actually usually not the timing belt that fails it's usually a component, often an idler pulley that's frozen or the water pump pulley froze, something like that. I very seldom see one of these that looks all shredded up like a bird's nest or anything. Maybe out of 30 timing belts, I guess I've maybe done only one have I ever seen where the belt actually failed. Oftentimes it's a component problem and I believe oftentimes it's because people don't do their timing belt like this, changing all the components. So. I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together again, and uh, maybe we'll go ahead and just let you get a listen to it just to confirm that the repair is complete at the end. I know people like that. All right, so one thing you can do if you wish, uh, I don't think it really matters though, but before you put everything back together, you can go ahead and do a cranking test. Right now, I've got the crankshaft position sensor disabled, so I know I'm not gonna get sparked, but you can disable the ignition however you want or the fuel, and just crank the engine and make sure that it sounds okay during the cranking. That way the engine won't start. Um, really, honestly, with the strength of the starter motor, you're just gonna you know, maybe minimize the amount of damage you would have done if you didn't do this right. But I'm gonna go ahead and just do that real quick, and we'll just see what it sounds like. All right, sounds really good. Obviously nothing banging or clanging. Um, I feel pretty confident because I can easily see the marks are all lined up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together and then we'll go ahead and start it. All right, I'm sick of looking at this thing. Let's go ahead and fire it up and see if we get a really, really viral YouTube video of blowing up an engine after a timing belt. Sounds good to me. All right, that will do it. Hey, thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this helpful.